instructors, not the original instructors. <laughs> Three uh, instructors are going to be on the program today. And so the first one is Brother Jim Cawthon, and he is going to speak on the subject, Pause and Reset. There are two things that I know about you and two things that you know about me. The first is we want to serve Jehovah, and we want to do so acceptably. And the second is we want to be happy. Wouldn't you agree? Now, the to the first point, there's not much of a problem because you've had five months of study now. You've been through the Bible. You know what Jehovah expects, what he wants, and you're prepared to do it. But now as to the second point, that can be a little bit more challenging. And why do I say that? Well, happiness can be tricky. We all know people that by all standards should seem to be happy, but they're not. On the other hand, we know people who face many, many difficult challenges every day, but they just seem to radiate happiness. We quickly realize that happiness is not dependent on things, on circumstances, or even on people. Why is that? It's because true happiness is not an end goal. It is a byproduct. But a byproduct of what? Well, the answer to that question lies back in time. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Deuteronomy chapter 16. And here, discussing one of the three annual festivals that Jehovah required the Israelites to attend, in verse 15, he gave, he gave these words. He said, seven days you will celebrate the festival to Jehovah your God in the place that Jehovah chooses. For Jehovah your God will bless all your produce and all that you do and you will become nothing but joyful. Now, did you notice Jehovah's words there? You will become nothing but joyful. You see, being joyful in, uh, as a worshiper of Jehovah was not an option. He actually made it an act of worship. But why? It's because imperfect humans can lose their appreciation for things that become a routine part of life, even if these things are, are a reflection of Jehovah's loving concern. So what was it about these festivals that would cause all who attended them to become nothing but joyful? Well, each festival was to be a time when the Israelites stopped what they were doing. In other words, they would pause they would go up to Jerusalem to reflect on the blessings that they had received from Jehovah and that they were receiving. In other words, they would reset. What effect did this pause and reset have on the Israelites? One word, gratitude. You know what happens when we feel gratitude? Happiness always follows. You remember Jehovah's words, you will become nothing but joyful. And Jehovah knows that happiness is a byproduct of gratitude. Now, how does this ancient example help us today? Well, life in this old system is filled with hardships. Ahead of you will be challenges, uncertainties, time and unforeseen occurrence. And really, that's true for all of us. Jehovah knows this. But he also knows that it is precisely during times of crisis that we have the most to gain by having a grateful perspective. Gratitude reminds us that our Creator loves us and that He cares about us. It reminds us that God's goodness exists even in the worst that life has to offer. Gratitude doesn't cure suffering, but it has the power to heal. Gratitude doesn't erase despair, but it has the power to radiate hope. Gratitude nullifies negativity. The joy of Jehovah becomes our stronghold, but it's up to us. Because gratitude is more than just a feeling, brothers and sisters. It's a mindset. It's a disposition. 
and its choice. Why do we say a choice? It's because we can make a conscious decision to see blessings instead of curses. Jehovah is called the happy God, and he gives us the recipe to be happy too. That recipe is found in part in Psalm 143. Let's turn there. Psalm 143, verse 5, David, the, the psalmist, said this. He said, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your activity. I eagerly ponder over the works of your hands. What's the point? The psalmist is basically telling us that from time to time we have to stop and press the pause button. We need to take time to look around. Jehovah has bejeweled our world with daily reminders of his goodness, his power, but most of all, his love for us. All we have to do is take the time to look. We are immersed in the goodness of God. So pause from time to time. Take a moment to appreciate what God is giving you each day. Contemplate the abundance and the diversity of life. Ponder, muse, meditate on all the works of the true God. Drink in the awesomeness of the universe on a starry night. No two sunrises and no two sunsets are ever exactly alike. Look up to the clouds. What you see is ever changing. There's nothing exactly like it before, nor will there ever be again. The feeling you will experience is a refreshment of the soul. It is a reset. Eyes see only light, ears hear only sound, but a grateful heart perceives meaning. We perceive that Jehovah created all these things as a gift for us. That's right, each day was to be a very special gift, unique unto itself. Why? To make endless life not just special, but amazing, wondrous, and always a joy. Connecting with Jehovah's creation helps to discharge anxiety. It shifts our attention to something safe, something enduring, something outside ourselves. It helps us to accept life's uncertainties by reassuring us that we are part of something larger, something everlasting, something immensely important. Yes, we are a part of God's purpose. Gratitude is important, not only because it helps us feel good, but because it inspires us to do good. A grateful spirit will make you more loving, more forgiving, more feeling, more thoughtful. Thankfulness is a soil in which joy thrives. So open your hearts to the blessings around you. Let gratefulness flow from the inside out to others. You too will become nothing but joyful and that joy will show in your smile, in your eyes, in your touch, and in your words. Why? Because gratitude is the ability to experience life, not as a test, but as a gift. It will impact every relationship that you have, your family, your marriage, your work even your ministry. You'll be in a much better position to make a real difference in the lives of others. It will liberate you from the prison of self-preoccupation, and it will replace a critical spirit with a sense of appreciation. So pause regularly to reflect on what Jehovah has given you. Give the digital world a break. Take a walk outside and don't just look, pause and perceive. Try to count all the blessings that you receive each day and you will find it easier to cope with the trials and the stresses of life. We are never more than one grateful thought away from increased peace of mind and greater peace of heart. Just remember, 
pause and reflect. I think we all agree that we needed that. We appreciate that effective presentation. Now, this